Sacred Heart is proud to sponsor Pensacola Histories in recognition of the Daughters of Charity who brought their mission of care to Pensacola over 90 years ago. Hello and welcome to our continuing story of Pensacola, North America's first place city. And in our episode today, we're going to be talking about the continuing story of the evolution of banking, the, the, the lubricant that keeps the economy going no matter what era we're in. And in our first episode, we talked about uh, Don Francisco Moreno and his gold chest of gold under his bed, which uh, basically served as a source of uh, uh, early banking. Then we brought on the, uh, the Bank of Pensacola in the 1830s uh, with its episode uh, dealing trying to deal with the creation of the Alabama, Florida, Georgia Railroad. And of course, we ended that with the, the panic of 1837, the collapse of the bank and the railroad. We then turned to the creation of the Brent Bank in 1873, and then the first national bank brought here by the Sullivan Brothers in 1880. Beyond that came the Merchants Bank, headed by Mr. Louis Knowles, and then of course the three building and loan associations, which were created in the 80s as the mechanism which allowed people, uh, the, this rush of incoming population to build their own homes, and then finally the, uh, the creation in uh, 1892 of the uh, Citizens National Bank, uh, for another national bank, and of course we mentioned also that all of these uh, national banks were permitted to, to create and, and circulate their own currency. And we concluded episode one with the creation here of still another national bank brought here by Charles O'Neill and, uh, and Charles Lamar, and this of course was the American National Bank. So early into the 20th century, banking was, the, it was the lubricant that, which kept a very rapidly growing ec economy here going. And by the time we get to the 1903-1904 uh, 1903, period, the first national bank was growing so rapidly that they, they knew they had to expand once again. Now, they ha there, were, uh, there were new opportunities, of course, not only for banking, but the, uh, the leaders of the, that bank, and of course, including Francis Brent, felt that what the city also needed was more quality office space. So they began the design of a new office tower. This was a building which was to be either eight or nine stories tall and would be located at 215 South Palafox Street. They, all the plans were done and they, they published a beautiful architect's rendering of this in the, in the public press and they were just about ready to break ground when on Halloween night in 1905 a great fire swept through what we today call the Brent Block. That's the block uh, surrounded by Palafox, Garden, Romana, and uh, Balin. And the, virtually every building there was destroyed. And of course, that meant a, lot, a loss of, a great loss of, uh, of uh, uh, office space. Well, Mr. Brent, the, uh, one of the owners, and William A. Blunt, the, the other major owner, came together and said, we are going to rebuild very quickly, and we're going to build our, our structures much larger than they had been, so that we will create a, a new surplus of office professional office space well when that happened of course there was there was no need for the first national to build an eight or nine story to tower so they fell back and regrouped uh, sent re emissaries throughout the south to see what the other banks were doing in terms of architecture and they came back and decided on the creation of a neo-grecian style quality bank building and that is what they built at 215 south Palafox Street. And of course that building still stands today and is the headquarters of Miss Janet Hawley and the tax collector. Well, the, the, the new First National Bank moved into operation. Uh, it was the, bank, the new building was completed in 1907 and they, were, they functioned well. Well, okay, we move forward uh, just a little bit uh, uh, th from that point, and the, another group of men felt, well, there was still an absence here of all that people needed in the way of banking services, because new ideas were coming into the fore, and at this point in time, a group of men who were very, well, I guess we would say very uh, aggressive, uh, put together the idea of still another, another bank, and this was become the People's National Bank, which was, again, be located on South Palafox Street. That bank uh, went into, into being, and it would merge three years later with the Citizens Bank, and so we created then what uh, many people still remember here as the Citizens and People's National Bank. Once again, a national bank which was able to uh, cast its own care, uh, currency, and of course, this is something that they did. We move forward now another year to the, uh, to the year 1910. And by now, the American National Bank, which had been operating successfully down on the corner of, Pal of, Garden, uh, of Government and uh, Jefferson Street, now felt that they had reached a point where they just had to have more, more space. And so they purchased 
a building on the corner of Palafox and uh, Government Street that had been erected uh, some 30 years before. It was called the Clubs Building. It was a wooden three-story structure. They tore that building down and began the construction then of a new tower. And this, of course, was a, an 11-story building, the tallest building in all of Florida at that time. And we today, with that building, of course, is still there. We've changed the names many, many, many times. But this now became the headquarters of the American National Bank. They occupied the lower two, two floors, and the other the floors above were rented to all forms of all sorts of, uh, of uh, oh, what can we call it? All sorts of professional services. We move forward again to the latter part of 1911, and at this point in time, a, a rather unique development occurred. And now a, a, a group of younger men came forward and they said, well, banking is obviously a very successful business. We can make money in it. And so they organized a bank which uh, was reused the name of, that, of a bank that we had had here almost 100 years before, and they organized a new version of the Bank of Pensacola. And they opened a, their, their banking building, their banking service, in the new Blunt building on the corner of Palafox and Garden Street. And the Bank of Pensacola started out, and they had hardly gotten into business, and doing, they were doing quite well, when a, another group of very aggressive young men came to them and said, we, would, we, would, uh, we have a great idea. You know, all across South and Central Florida, uh, they are, they are, people are buying up land, they are, they are conditioning it, uh, then they are putting it in form for sales to people up North, because Florida, the name, the word Florida has magic in it, and people are buying, people up North are snapping up lots all over Central Florida, said we can do the same thing here and make a lot of money because there's a lot of land just north of Pensacola which has been uh, cut over in the lumbering industry. We want to buy that, clean it up, package it, and offer it for sale. And we need to borrow $100,000. Well, the, the, uh, the men at the Bank of Pensacola thought this like, sounded like a wonderful idea, and they made the loan. We move forward a little over a year into the, early, into the middle part of 1913, and at that point in time, another recession struck, a serious recession struck the country. And this was, uh, well, some people said it was started because uh, uh, President Wilson forced a, uh, an income tax on the people, but whether, whether that was the course or not, the recession was there, and our new Bank of Pensacola had a number of loans that were a little on the shaky side, so they they turned to these aggressive young men who had borrowed the $100,000 for land development, said, we need to recall the loan. And the young men said, well, we would be tickled to death to repay it, of course, but uh, well, we've spent all the money, and as soon as we sell the land, we'll, uh, we'll repay the, the loan. Well, the long and the short of it was, by the end of the year, the, this, this new bank failed. And when it failed, uh, when the, of course, many of the, the assets of many of our local merchants up and down Palafox and Garden Street were lost with it because there, no, there was no federal in, uh, deposit insurance at that point in time. Uh, we move forward just another, another, uh, another six months and still another bank is founded. Uh, this time, was uh, the Malone family was at the heart of it, and they formed a bank which, we, first of all, would be called the Banking, Sir, Banking Savings and Trust Company, and they moved into the same space that had been occupied by the, the Bank of Pensacola. And this was a, another local, state-operated bank. It was not one of those that could, could, uh, could issue currency, but it was a good, solid organization. Another six months went by, <clears throat> and one morning in the, in the month of January of uh, eight, uh, 1914, Francis Brent was in his office at the First National Bank, and he received a cable. And the cable announced that the firm in Liverpool, England, the firm of Crow Rudolph, which had been the, the conduit for uh, economic transactions between First National Bank and the British co companies that were buying lumber through Pensacola, that the Crow Ru Rudolph had not had been unable to meet their obligations and they had closed. And that firm owed uh, the First National Bank here about five hundred thousand dollars. Well. This was a terrible blow, but Mr. Brent wasn't worried. He knew that First National had about $400,000 in gold sitting in the vault, so he said he felt that they were in good shape. But nonetheless, because this was a, a federally insured bank, they had to call in a, an examiner, and the man who arrived here uh, to, to make the study was named Goodhart. And a uh, man was, was, well, we won't go into the, the, uh, the question of what, the, his name with what, what, what actually happened. He looked at the, the bank, the uh, First National Bank papers and studies, made his study, and said the bank has to close. And it did. 
First National Bank was closed. Mr. Goodhart then uh, went down the way to just a couple of months, and he organized still an, a, another new bank on his own, which was called, again, the Merchants National Bank. And that Merchants Bank uh, almost at once began to work very closely with the American National Bank, and the two worked together very nicely. Uh, there were some, some bad times in, the, in uh, 1915, 16. There was another time of uh, economic uh, turbulence in the country. But nonetheless, uh, the, the Americans survived, and by the time we reached uh, 1919, the American National Bank and the Merchants Bank merged. They adopted the American National Bank name, and they indeed were a part of the system here, which would continue on. And the descendants of that merger are still in operation here today. That is what has ultimately become the Wachovia Bank system here in Pensacola. Okay. We move uh, forward just a little bit more as we as we come to the the, uh, the status of the the Pensacola in the in the in the 1920s. All of these banks that we have mentioned continued on providing service. The whole, the two, the, there were only two surviving uh, home and savings groups, Pensacola Home and Savings and Mutual Federal, or First Mutual. They continued to provide the, basically the service of home loans, which were so necessary all through this period. The banks pr proceeded on. Uh, we get, we, then we come to the Depression. Now, uh, there have been many, many uh, heart-wrenching stories told about what happened to, to many savers across the country when the Depression came because across the United States, hundreds and hundreds of banks failed. And of course, as they failed in, that, in those days, the, they, the, the insurance level was, was all but zero. And as a result, um, people would stand in line for hours hoping to get their money back, and they couldn't. Uh, those who have seen the wonderful Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life, will remember the, the, the two runs that are talked about in that film. They, they, I, I mention those because uh, they might jog your memory as to what the situation was like, how, how frantic people became as money became scarce. Well, we move into in the year 1944. We're past the, the Depression. We're into the middle of World War uh, two. And at this point in time, the American National Bank is sold to the Florida National Bank chain. This is a, a chain which is uh, led by, uh, by financier Edward Ball, and the, the, they take the Florida National not only takes over the name, it make, becomes, this becomes a, a F uh, Florida National Bank chapter, but also at that particular time, uh, they, they acquired the building, the 11-story building, and that would be their headquarters up into the year 1960-61. Uh, meanwhile, the, uh, the, uh, for the Banking Savings and Trust Company has prospered, and along the way it has changed its name. It becomes the first bank bank and trust company. The uh, First National Bank, of course, has long been gone. The Citizens and People National Bank continues its work at 250, uh, 15 South Palafox. And we have a, a generally very solid banking situation. At the end of World War II, the Woodbury interests begin a, uh, the founding of a series of smaller banks on the west side of Pensacola, all of which continue on to, to, the, uh, to serve us today. So as we move into the, the 1960s and 70s and 80s, and I won't try to bring on all of this into focus for you because there have been so many, but more and more banks are, are founded here, many of them are small private banks, some of them are, are, are branches of others. And we, at one point in time, about the year 1995, we had reached a point, and I, I didn't make the study, but I, I believe it probably was true, that we had more, and this includes both uh, Escambia and Santa Rosa counties, we had more banks and bank, bank uh, uh, adjuncts, the stations out in the community. We had more of those to get in branches. We had more of those than we had convenience stores. You get to, that, of course, has begun to change, did begin to change, so that the consolidations are in effect. So as we and we talk about banking in the, in the 21st century. It's a changed business. In the years 19, uh, uh, 2007, 2008, and early 9, banking across the country was in a, a very different mode. And many people were very, have been and were concerned. But even though that was the case, uh, the FDIC services made sure that, at least at this point in time, made sure that no depositor lost so long as his, his account was of a certain level. So that's our story of banking. It has been with us now in one form or another since the year, uh, since the early part of the 1830s. We have it here today and our economy prospers because of it.